using flowcharts in MS Visio. Creating flowcharts in Visio is fairly easy. In this tutorial, I'll take you through the steps of the basics to help you create your charts. First of all, I'm going to start up Microsoft Visio. I'm using Windows 7, so I will click on the Windows button and type in Visio into the search field and then press enter. This will now load up your program in order to, for you to create your flowchart. When Visio first loads up, you're presented with many options. We're going to choose the flowchart options, which will then load up the essential tools that we're going to use to create our flowchart. So double click on the flowchart icon. For this instance, we're going to choose the basic flowchart. The tools are now loaded for us to use to create our flowchart. On this left hand side, we now have the shapes that we will use to create our flowchart. To use any of these shapes, simply click and hold down the button and drag to the place that you would like your shape to be placed. A flowchart is always started with the start and end shape. In previous versions of MS Visio, you may have seen this being referred to as a terminator shape. So let's create a basic flowchart. I'll keep the start shape in place and this time I'm going to give it its title. So if you double click on the shape, you then get to add the text. In this case, I'm going to call it boiling a kettle. Now we've given it a title. Just click anywhere in the open space to return back to the main view. Now we want to add some processes. Simply take the process shape and drag so it lays underneath the boiling kettle. As you can see, a guideline makes itself appear so you can see that you're actually putting it in the right place. We can double click inside the shape to add the text to that we require. Now we've got the start of the process and the next process. So if we simply click on the first one and then hover down to the blue arrow, this will then give us the ability to add a link. If we press the blue arrow, it will create us our first link. What we, you will also notice is that it gives you the ability to also add shapes. This saves you time by not having to drag and drop the shape onto the diagram. You can simply click on the next part that you're going to add a, a process to and then select the shape. Obviously by using Visio more and more you'll become more and more familiar with the, the shapes that you wish to use. Again I'm just going to add a bit of text into the process box. Now I'm going to add a decision box. Again, simply click to add to text. Click on the shape, hover over. And that's another process. And again. And the links have already been created for us. We'll just add a link to the boil the kettle to the is the kettle boiled field. As you can see, the process flow diagram is taking shape. So we want to add a yes and a no into the process boxes. What 
What you will find when your process diagrams become more and more complex, you may have process boxes all over the place. Um, for example, like so. Uh, we can simply and quickly uh, tidy up your uh, process chart by highlighting all boxes and lines and just clicking on the auto align and space option, which brings it all together in a more organized manner. You can also use the positioning tool to give your flow chart a more organized feel. So if we click on the position and then auto align center, it then pulls it all in order. You can also link documents and other files uh, to each of your processes. Uh, if you're adding a document, uh, you would really tend to use the document shape. And this could be a form that you fill out as part of the process or at the end of the process, which will complete your flow diagram with full functionality so you can follow the process and at the end get the proper form that you require by adding it to the document attachment. In this example, I'm just going to add a couple of pictures uh, onto my flow chart, uh, but you would, you would use the, the document attachment in the exact same way. So I'll just delete my document for the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fill kettle with water uh, process and I'm going to add a picture. So if we right click, hyperlink, but we want to browse to the address and because it's a local file I've got it on my desktop. Just going to change the file extension so it sees all files and select the picture and then OK. Now with the fill kettle with water process box we now have the picture linked to that box. So if we right click, we can then see that the tapwater.jpg has been associated with that bar. If we want to see the full functionality of that link, if we go to the view option and select full screen on the left hand side, we can hover over the fill kettle with water and you can see the link. Once I click on that link, it should open up the picture. Just say yes to that. And there we have the picture of the water. If you was doing this with a file, like I said, you could do it with a form that could open up and could be filled in as part of the process. If your flowchart becomes a process with needing more than one flowchart and you would like them linking between them, this is also simple to do. You can create a new page by simply clicking on the new page icon. And that will automatically bring up the option to use page two. To show you how easy it is to link between uh, flowcharts, for this example, I'm simply going to highlight the existing flowchart we have. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it into page two. If you were doing this for real, then you would obviously have a separate process model that you've already created or build on this secondary page. Now, if we quickly flip back to page one, and if we decide to link the second flow chart from the uh, first box, for example, if we can right click and choose the hyperlink option, similar to the way we add in a text or a document, to the flowchart and instead of browsing for the address we're going to do a browse for the sub address which will be a document within this document so if we click on browse we get the option to use page one or page two so for this case we're going to link to page two and then press ok and then ok again now as the two pages are now linked 
as you hover over the uh, linked shape, you will get the hyperlink to show that it's linked to the next page. So to push this to the test, again, if we view it in full mode, so go to view, full screen, and as you can see, there's a link there, so we can click on that, which takes us through to the second page. Obviously, in this case, the pages look exactly the same because I've simply copied and pasted the original flowchart. Here are some of the key tips that I've brushed upon uh, using this tutorial. Uh, you should always end all the options of the flowchart with the start and stop. Uh, as I said in previous versions, it has been the terminator. Uh, if, a if a process produces a document, uh, use the document shape. Um, if it results in a computer registration, use a data shape. If the process moves to another procedure, end it with start and stop with the name of the next procedure. Uh, this, is a, this is useful because you will know exactly if, you, if it's set up with a link, you can click on that and it will go to the correct name of the next procedure. Um, and you can also have multiple pages on the one document. Uh, we created two in our document, but if you keep pressing the new page, you can have infinite number of pages that you wish. Thank you for watching. I hope it's been helpful.